Hey guys, welcome to lesson one. We're going to be talking about evaluating int roots and using and using rational expressions. So before we do that, I want to get started off with this chart. <clears throat> so um, you're not going to have this chart available on the test, but it's super easy to make. And but this chart will be nice to like um, if you're working on homework or whatever, just to kind of have a visual of it. Um, so like what this is is if you have let's start with like three. Three squared is nine. 3 to the 3rd power is 27, 3 to the 4th power is 81, and 3 to the 5th power is 243. So um, if we need to find, let's go backwards, like the 5th root of 243, that's going to be 3. The 4th root of 81 is 3. The cubed root of 27 is 3 the square root of nine is three. So this will help you both going forwards and backwards, um, but you can always make your own list. So like when I, anything to the first power, that's kind of generic. So like if I need to make, um, you know, square roots list, then I have like two squared is four, so the square root of four is two. Three squared is nine, so the square root of three, or the square root of nine is three. And so it's super easy to make that list. If I wanted to do um, 2 to the third power, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So 2 to the third power is 8. So the cubed root of 8 is 2, like that. So um, it's really easy to make it um, if you need it on the test. Okay, so um, the number inside the root is called the radicand, and then the number on the outside, that little thing, is called the index. So we're going to talk a lot about that today. So um, here I have the cubed root of negative 27. So you can take odd roots of negative numbers. You just can't take even roots of negative numbers. So let's go back and use our chart. So negative 27. So I know that it's going to be negative something. So what's the cubed root of 27? So let's go back up here. So the cubed root, I see 27. So the cubed root of 27 is 3. So down here, it's going to be negative 3. And this is why. Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 27. Okay, the fourth root of 81. Let's see, 81, the fourth root of 81. Well, that happens to also be 3. And then the square root of 49, um, so let's find the square root of 49 is 7. Notice the square root doesn't have a 2, so that's sometimes when we're going through these things, um, that'll sometimes hurt your head, but just, just know that if it's not there, it's implied that it's a 2. Okay, so you need to be able to put it from this form, some kind of like square root, cubed root, um, into exponential form. And so here's the thing. If I have the square root, so I'm going to put that 2 there for a reason, even though it's usually, it usually just looks like that. Um, but the we have an x to the first on the inside, and then we have an index of 2. So this would be x to the one half power. So the rule is you are going to put exponent over root. So this is exponent one half. So this one, again, to the first power would be one third. This one is going to be x to the one fourth power. So notice this one, this is a two and a three. Um, so it's going to be x to the two-thirds power. And um, so hopefully you understand that. Let's go backwards. So what would this look like in radical form? Well, this is our exponent. This is our root. So m to the first power, or just m, and we're going to take the sixth root of that. So taking the roots, it might look a little bit different, but this all means the same. So like, if we had this exponent on the outside and we had it in exponential form on the inside, that is the exact same thing as saying this. Um, so these are all like very different ways of showing it. 
Um, don't forget when you have a negative exponent that you are going to um, move it from the numerator, numerator to the denominator if it's on top or from the denominator to the numerator if it's already on bottom. So that's where we're going from here to here. And then just like it's kind of the same thing as we did up here. This M, it might be outside, that's okay. Um, or it might like um, notice this is in exponential form and this is in radical form. So either way, it's just fine. Okay, so we're gonna use these without using a calculator. So I'm gonna tell you, make it easy on yourself. So when I look at this 125, I don't know what 125 squared is off the top of my head, but I can probably figure out the cubed root of 125. So let's go up here to our chart and we're dealing with um, cubed root. So cubed root of 125 is five. So I know that I'm going to, I'll do that first, and it doesn't matter. You could do the squared first, or you could do the um, cubed root first. So the cubed root of 125 is 5, and then I'm going to take 5 squared, which is 25. Um, notice what we were talking about. So this is a negative. So the first thing that's going through my mind is it's 1 over 8 to the 4 thirds power. So again, I know off the top of my head that the cubed root of 8 is 2. And then I'll take 2 to the 4th power. So let's go and I'll, I'll show you the other way. So 2 to the 4th power is 16. So this is going to be 1 over 16 for my answer. Okay, so this one is the square root of 4 which is two and two to the fifth power. If you look up at the chart, it's gonna be 32. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do the next three. See if you can do it on your own. Push pause and see if you can. Okay, so notice that this one's negative. So I put it um, underneath the one. <clears throat> this one I took um, the fourth root of 81 and got three, and then I took three to the third power. One to any power is one. So. Um, I didn't put a lot of thought into that one. Okay, you also need to be able to navigate through these with using a calculator. So these are going to be yucky answers. So on my calculator, I have this button that looks like this. It's called a carrot button. So I'm going to type in 22 carrot and then 1 fourth. Every calculator is a little different, so go ahead and play around with yours. You should get about 2.17. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll go through this and um, put the answer down so you can double check and make sure that you have the same thing as me. Okay, um, so you should have about 19.25. All right. Um, this one, you can do it one of two ways. And maybe practice and see which way you like the best. Um, so if I were to turn this into an exponent, um, it would be 11 to the 4 fifths power. So you can kind of practice what we have been doing. Um, you end up getting about 6.81. Um, but there is another way to do it. So if you find on your calculator this little button, a lot of calculators will have it. So how I would type this in is I would type it in as 5 and then that button and then 11, that's going to give me the fifth root of 11, and then I'm going to take this to the fourth power. So I would do like maybe a carrot and then a four. And again, you should be getting about the same thing, 6.81. Okay, now we're going to um, go back and talk about writing it in radicals. So think like a root notation. So I'm always going to think about, okay, this is my exponent. Oops, this is my root. So then it's going to be the sixth root of 44 to the first power or just the sixth root of 44. Um, this one is going to be the seventh root of 39 to the fourth, or you could rewrite it as the seventh root of 39 to the fourth power. Either one is totally fine. Let's do one more. So negative 32 
I'm going to have that inside and then the fifth root and um, you can put it on the inside, the three on the inside here or on the outside there. Either way is totally okay. Okay, now we're going to go the other way and write it in exponential form. So um, remember, it's going to be exponent over root. So my base is 8, and so my exponent is 2 thirds. This one, 16 to the 3 fourths power. This one is 11 to the 7 eighths power. So the way I always remember these is like roots come from the ground, so they're going to be on the bottom of my fraction. Okay, so now that we're super duper good at those, we are going to take and start applying what we know. So if I ask you to solve this, and let's pretend that this wasn't here, um, you would say, okay, Ms. Siegel, we're just going to divide by 6 and solve for x. So let's do that. So 384 divided by 6 is 64. Okay, so the only difference is that we're going to go ahead and keep that, that cube um, to the third power. So in order to get rid of the third power, we're going to take the cubed root of it. And whatever we do to one side, we're going to do the other side. And so this is the reason. Um, if I were to look at this as an exponent, um, if I took this to the third root, if I have the third power and I took it to the third root, do you see how that simplifies to 1? So it would just be x to the first power, or x. Same thing. So that's what we want. It, it neutralizes that x back to just the first power. So um, whatever this exponent is, we're going to undo it with its root. So these cancel out, and I get x to the first power, just x, equals, and then the cubed root of 64. So you can do it on your calculator, or you can go up here, and let's see, the cubed root of 64 is 4. Um, something else I want to kind of talk about, this is an odd root. So odd roots, you don't have to worry about plus or minus. So it is what it is. But even roots, you have to worry about including a plus or minus. So remember, um, you know, if I took the square root, if I had like x squared equals 9, and I took the square root of both of them, I always taught you that you need to have x equals plus or minus 3. Well, odd roots, you don't need that. It is what it is. So if I, I couldn't plug in a negative 4 and get the same thing, it would change my answer. So um, odd roots, you don't have to worry about plus or minus. Okay, let's go on to the next one. So notice that this is in parentheses. So I can't touch that until I get rid of this exponent. So I'm going to take the fifth root of it. And if I take the fifth root of one side, I have to take the fifth root of the other side. So these cancel. And I have x minus 8 equals, again, I don't have to put plus or minus because it's an odd root, the fifth root of 10. Then I still need to get x by itself, so I'm going to add 8 to both sides. And I get x equals 8 plus the fifth root of 10. Notice again, it's not plus or minus, it's just normal, it's just plus. Um, notice on this one, I need to, I have this 5 out here that I need to get rid of, just like I got rid of the 6 first over here, um, before I can take a root of anything. So anytime you have anything on the outside, like this 5 or the 6, you've got to get rid of it first to isolate the exponent. So 21 minus 5 is 16, then I'm going to take the 4th root of both sides. So this cancels, I get x minus 3 equals, let's see, the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. Also notice it's an even root, so I have plus or minus 2. Okay, so now I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I have 3 plus or minus 2. So this means two different answers. So 3 plus 2 is 5. 3 minus 2 is 1. 
Okay, this one incorporates both of them. So let's pretend like I just had 5x plus 12 equals 362. That is how you're going to treat those. So like you know when you have this, you're going to subtract the 12, and then you're going to divide by 5. Same rules apply, so see if you can do that. Okay, once I got rid of the 12 and the 5, <clears throat> I was left with um, x, the fourth, or I'm sorry, um, x plus 3 to the 4th power equals 70. So I took the 4th root of both sides that canceled that out. Um, I also had to include a plus or minus because it was an even root. And so I, was in the, I ended up with this answer here. Okay, so give yourself a little time to read through this problem and kind of wrap your mind around what it's asking. Okay, so there's a few things that I want you to um, notice. First of all, the equations. We've got that. And then we know that um, the W stands for the weight of the coral cod, and um, the L stands for the length. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out what it's asking. Estimate the length, so I'm trying to find this, of a coral cod that weighs 200 grams. So it weighs 200 grams. So 200 equals 0 0.016 L to the third. So this is our junk on the outside right here. So I've got to get rid of that before I can take the cube root of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide by 0 0.016. And I get L to the third power equals 12,500. Now I'm going to take the cube root of both sides, and that is going to give me the length. So this is probably not a nice answer. Um, so go ahead and see if you can type it in your calculator. And guys, I just realized that there was a seven here. <laughs> um, so um, that's okay. We'll just take it as um, 0 0.016. We'll pretend that he's not here. I just couldn't see it because I marked on it. Um, and so when I do this, I end up getting 23.21. And let's see what it's asking. It's, it's in centimeters, so he's about 23 centimeters long. If you happen to do it the other way and you saw the seven, you should get about um, 22.88 centimeters, just FYI. And that's it.